In this video, you will learn how to send automated test results to TestRail using a specification-first approach. In this workflow, you first design the test cases in TestRail, which gives you the opportunity to write in multiple formats, review, categorize, prioritize, and select for automation. Then, you automate the selected test cases and run the tests, generating a JUnit-style XML report. Then, you can use the test case mapping feature embedded in the TestRail CLI to send the results back to TestRail and centralize your reporting on a single platform. The specification-first approach keeps test case mappings even when structural code changes occur, reduces chances of duplicating test cases through automatic creation, enables thorough test case design and planning, and suits teams who already have test cases designed in TestRail or require good test documentation. For example, I have created some test cases here in this test rail project. The first test case is to verify the title of the home page. The second is to verify the presence of the demo link in the home page. Then the third test case is an invalid test, which I created so you can see all the information uploaded to test rail after the automated test run. And the last test case is login with valid credentials, which I choose not to automate. Once the test case design is done, the next step is to automate with the help of the documentation. So, let's jump to my editor, where I have written the automation code for the first three test cases. My first documented test case was to verify the title of the home page, and here I have automated the test. Next, you can see the automation code to verify the presence of the demo link on the home page. And here's the invalid test case automation code. Before running the automation, I want these automated tests to match the ones I have documented in TestRail when I upload the test results. How can you do that? If you are using JUnit Framework, you can use the TestRail annotation feature provided by the TestRail JUnit extensions. Let's see how. First, go to your pom.xml file and add the dependency called TestRail JUnit extensions. Once you install this dependency, go to your test class again and add this annotation before the test class. Then, in all the test cases you want to map, use the annotation at testRail and provide the ID for the corresponding test case in testRail. For the test case verify title of the home page, for example, I added the ID C100 because this is the test case ID in testRail. This will link my test case in the documentation with the test case in my automation code. For the second test case, I have provided the ID C101, the same ID you will find in testRail. And for the invalid test, the ID is C109, which I have provided here as well. Once you have mapped your test cases, you can execute them. For that, I'm going to run the command MVN compile test. You can see the execution. This one will be quick. And it's done. Three test cases were executed. One of them has failed. The next step is to upload these test results from the local editor to TestRail. To do so, I'm going to use the TestRail CLI, which is a command line interface tool that makes it easier to upload test automation results from any JUnit style XML file to TestRail. Installing the TestRail CLI is as easy as running the line pip install trcli on your system's command line or adding it to the script in your build pipeline. I already installed it here, so let's quickly move to the command to upload the results. I'm going to use trcli minus y minus c case matcher, and minus F. Let's try to understand what this command is all about. The first option is minus Y, which you want to use for creating all the entities in TestRail. The minus C option shows the path to configuration file, in this case, the config.yaml file. Let's check it out. You can see all the required configurations here. The hostname, the project name, the credentials to authenticate in the TestRail instance, and the title of the automated test run. The CLI will upload the test results according to this configuration. Going back to the command, you have the minus minus case matcher property. This means I'm parsing the test case IDs using the at test rail annotation and providing the IDs using the JUnit property. The case matcher option matches the automated test cases to the test cases designed previously in test rail. You can also make use of the case matcher name option. To do so, add the case ID from your test case in the automated test's name. Finally, the minus F option provides the path to the test report. This is the target test report generated in the target folder. So let's hit enter and run this command. 
After the configuration, the test rail CLI created a test run and submitted all three test results in 12.9 seconds. If you click on the link for the test run, you'll be able to see the results in test rail. This is the project defined in the configuration file. And this is the title of the run specified in the same file. Scrolling down, you will find all three tests executed in the automated test run. You can see the verify title of the homepage test here, which is the same test case you will find in your test case repository. And they were not duplicated. The CLI just created a new test run with these test cases and added the results. And if you click on the failed test, you can see the complete exception information, why this test case has failed, generated from the automated test. So this is how you can upload automated test results, which are already documented using the test rail CLI. Be mindful that test cases without case IDs in the code will not be created, and results will not be submitted when using this specification-first approach. If you are writing test cases directly in your code base and don't have any of these test cases in test rail, check more about the code-first automation approach.